pretty much today in our culture, there's a whole lot of talking, but is anybody really listening? We're gonna talk about that today on Bridges, reclaiming the lost art of connection. I'm Monica Schmelter and you're watching Bridges. Glad you could join us today. Today we're going to talk about really the fine art of listening. And joining me today are two people with Choose Different Media. Christy Neal, so good to have you today. Thank you for having us. We are so excited to be here, Monica. I'm excited to have you guys. And Kevin Burke, good to have you today. It's good to be here, I think. We understand that. Yeah. And I've said all these bridges shows for all these years, every single show, Kevin, I'm nervous. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like that. Which usually Chrissy, she'll come and do the shows. I'm always encouraging her. It's like, oh, you got this. It's easy. Just be yourself. <laughs> and now I'm on the spot. It's kind of like, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll say it like this. Well, Kevin, it's easy. Just be yourself. That's right. <laughs> That's you guys right. say not as I do. Kind of. Like, yeah. Well, so I do want to say you guys are a married couple and yes. you are with or have founded Choose Different Media. Let's start with what that's yes. about. So Choose Different Media is a funding house for God honoring media. Mm -hmm. So we just had it on our hearts. We felt like God was nudging us to help fund Christian creatives that have a fire and the skills to create awesome media, but no funding. Yeah. And so we're just kind of filling in the gap for that. I feel like we're in a season where people are looking for hope mm -hmm. and there's a real opportunity for faith-based media yes. to make a difference yeah. right now. There's really, and Kevin, I, I know that you know this, there's such a huge gap, right? There are so many people looking for hope. And like, even as we talk about listening today, so many people don't feel heard. They don't feel affirmed mm -hmm. looking for hope, but there's not a lot of good faith filled, clean media that's out there that people mm -hmm. can laugh at. And Kevin, don't you think laughter is so important? I, I think laughter is very important. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try to do it a lot. I do too. <laughs> especially, especially in situations like this where I'm nervous. Right. It's, just, it's, it's, right. Uh, Right. It's and, great. And I totally understand you being nervous. And I mm -hmm. think your hearts, both of you, Kevin and Christy, to fill that gap, to find people who are just passionate and not just have ideas, but I think you said, Christy, the exact right word, mm -hmm. the fire to do it, right? Because yes. you've got to have all the things. People have all kinds of ideas, but how much hard work are you willing to That's do right. about those things? So right. I'm so glad that you all founded choose different media. Thank you. We're starting to receive projects now. Mm -hmm. People are sending us pilots and it's very exciting. So we're oh. getting to watch those and see where we want to invest. And we just got our first pilot for a potential series. Wow. So I'm really excited for, for what God is doing and what he's bringing to us. And we're really kind of stepping into something new. Yes. You know, TV and film is very different for us, but we're willing to learn and mm -hmm. And we're so excited. And I do film Kevin often <laughs> <laughs> at the house. Yes. Sometimes when he doesn't know, but he, mm. he constantly is cracking me up. Yeah. It's well, my own personal laugh track. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm the laugh track. He's the comedian. <laughs> well, I saw that in action. I saw you on your bike. <laughs> <laughs> Sick jumps. On yep. Yeah, yep. I saw that and I heard you laughing. And yes. I thought they're That's having sweet. a great vacation. That's <laughs> right. That's but, right. But you know, I really do thank you both so much for wanting to do Choose Different Media. Sure. You know, for so many years I've been in Christian media and mm. I've seen and then they've been spectacular things and God has done miraculous things, mm -hmm. but we need more of a variety. Yes. And God has really put that passion and that fire on your heart. So I'm so thankful yes. and look forward to seeing, you know, some of the pilots that are presented to you that really take shape. Thank right? you. Thank you. And to see what they do in people's lives. Yes. So I think, Christy, one of the most important things that we all need, you know, is like to be heard mm -hmm. and to be affirmed. And we know as believers that Christ does that for us. Yes. But really, when I look at today's culture, there's a lot of talking, but not a lot of listening. Yeah, it's heartbreaking, actually. And as I was raising and we were raising our children, I remember especially telling my daughter because she had a public speaking class. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling her, Avery, if you will just make eye contact, you are 90% ahead 
of your classmates, yes. and I almost guarantee you an A. Mm -hmm. Just make eye contact. And that's something that Kevin and I work on constantly, you know, because I think in our culture, we're so unfortunately conditioned to look down now because of our cell phone yep. devices. Um, as he knows, I'm not shy about asking about what I need. No. <laughs> so I'll be like, look me in the eyes, you know, and then he'll look me in the eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I've always told Avery, use your voice. It matters. And then as you know, we have the podcast, everyone has a voice. Mm -hmm. And from a young, young age, I tell the women that I mentor, it's so important for your children to know that you listen to them mm -hmm. and that they have a voice. It matters and they're heard. And it's, it's funny, it's important for a child. It's important for a young adult, you know, a teen. It's important for adults. It's important for me, you know, now as a middle-aged woman. It was important for my 90-something-year-old grams yeah. that I listened to her stories and appreciated her wisdom. And I think, unfortunately, that's an art that we're kind of losing. It is. And I think that, you know, the more that we have all the devices, right, mm -hmm. it's such a temptation to be looking at them all the time, to see if I got a text. And, you know, it can be work, right? It can be all those things. I don't think mm -hmm. it's necessarily that people start out like with evil intent, like mm -hmm. I'm gonna ignore people, but that's what happens. Yes. We've got the cell phone. Does that happen for it's, you? It's all a distraction. Everything's yeah. a distraction. Mm -hmm. and you just, for, a lot of times, and I'm guilty of it as, as well. Mm -hmm. Someone will be talking to me and I will just think about something totally opposite or totally distant of what we're mm -hmm. even talking about. Yep. And they'll say, you understand? I'll say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> just agreeing. I mean, so it's... Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, Kevin, there are times I've agreed to things that I didn't think I agreed to <laughs> because I wasn't listening. Yes. Yeah. And if I would have listened more carefully and if I would have asked more questions, I would have understood that right. that's a completely dumb decision. Right. Yes. And lots of regret right there. And I mean, I'm guilty too. I remember, Christy, when you were on Bridges one time and you were talking about your sweet Avery <laughs> and she wanted a cell phone like all the other kids had. Yes. And you and her father determined that she was gonna wait till a later age yes. than what most people wait. Mm -hmm. And you kept saying, when she would say, but please, you know, everybody else has one or whatever she mm -hmm. said, I hear you. I hear you. I'm, I'm not going to do what you want right now, but I hear you. That's right. And I thought, what a good thing to say to your child or another adult. Even if mm -hmm. I don't agree, I hear you. Mm -hmm. I remember telling her, I hear you. I validate that this is hard. The mm -hmm. age was 15. Yeah. She was actually one of the, either the very last child or one of the last children oh, in I would freshman high school class. Yes, <laughs> I would think so. Because not... people have them at 10 and 11 yes. now, maybe yes. younger than and that. and eight, yes. Yeah. And so I would always remind her, we are building something different. And it's interesting that you bring that up because when I was taking her to college, we just moved her into college three weeks ago, I think it's been, um, we were driving around the town that we were in and I said, Avery, remember all those times I told you we were building something different? Mm -hmm. She said, yes, ma'am. I said, you're about to see what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I said, you have so much wisdom and you don't realize it yet, but as you meet more people your age and hear about their families and hear about their lives, you're gonna see a difference. Yes. And I always just brought it back to that theme. We're building something different. Mm -hmm. So you really built vision in with that. Because mm -hmm. I think, you know, sometimes we just say to our kids or to people, no. Mm -hmm. But we don't tell them necessarily why, that we're building something different, that mm -hmm. there's something more. And, you know, Kevin, like I was telling you, I've looked back at decisions that I've made at home mm -hmm. and at work. And I've agreed to stuff I didn't mean to because I wasn't listening or I wasn't listening carefully enough. What are some ways that you try to help yourself listen better? I think just actually listening, just try to close off everything else, close yeah. out the outside noise yeah. and the static you hear in the mm -hmm. environment and try to focus on listening. And, yeah. and my past is not perfect. And we've been through a lot of stuff. And actually, <clears throat> Chrissy's taught me a lot about listening, actually, through and also through therapy. I've done a lot of therapy. Mm -hmm. And it it really is very important to listen to communicate, especially in marriage. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge important right. thing. Right, and that's what most people say is their downfall 
in a marriage, yes. if it fails or if it's struggling, is that nobody's listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There might be a lot of talking. There might be a lot of yelling. There might be a lot of noise. Yes. But is anyone listening? Like, am I able to say, you know, to my husband, mm -hmm. I hear you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying so that he can feel affirmed, even if we're in some rough waters. Yeah, yep. I think it's very important to say that I hear you, that yeah. you're heard. You can listen all day long. Yeah. Actually, I listen to, when I listen to music, and it's funny that I love a lot of different music and, mm -hmm. and a lot of songs are really cool. I don't listen to the words, I just listen to the beat. Yeah. And then when I step back and listen to the lyric, it takes a whole new meaning. Mm -hmm. And I've never done it for years. Yep. And now I start reading the lyrics, oh, that's what they're saying. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, you know. Yes, there's a couple of songs I've looked back and I thought, oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. I didn't like, know I sang along with it's... that. I didn't really know what it was saying, but it had a good beat. Yeah. And it's like, that's right. I don't say focus, yep. it's just, no. yeah. No. But that's one of the things I loved about Kevin is uh, he would turn the TV off yes. sometimes when I was talking and then turn to me and just focus on me. This was early on, you know, when we were dating, getting to know each other. It just blew my mind. Yes. And even now, he does not have his cell phone at the dinner table. Like if we go out to eat, yes. he will never have his phone out. And that is so rare, but it makes me feel so loved. <laughs> and I'll yes. tell him, thank you. Thank you for not having your phone yeah. out. And just think about how many marriages, right? And families of people who are watching right now, even if a place to start was no cell phone at the dinner table yes. or no cell phone when we go out to eat. And those that those first few meals might be awkward, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I know sometimes I just feel panicked if I don't have my phone. Yes. I hate to admit it, but, but it is. But what if we just said, I value my family enough, there's no cell phone here. What might happen over a few dinners or a few dinners out? Don't you think yes. it would change, Christy? Oh, absolutely. Connection happens. Mm -hmm. We used to even leave the phones in the car sometimes when we had yes. the kids. And it was wonderful. Yes. And it's okay to be bored. That's one of the things that, that I used to tell the kids, like being bored is a blessing. Yes. That means there's no tragic anything going on. <laughs> <laughs> what a great <laughs> like, way. You know, cause we've been through some things. So yes. if, if you're bored, that's actually yeah. good. Yeah, what a great way to look at it. And it is mm -hmm. all about connection. Well, we've got to take a break. Sure. We want you to stay with us here today on Bridges. When we come back, we are going to continue to talk about reclaiming the lost art of connection. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter, and click subscribe. Once subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available. Thanks for watching Bridges. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. If you want to grow your faith and understand God's word more fully, then monicashmelter.com might be just the place for you. You'll find all of Monica's teachings on demand, complete with online extras. Get started today, because truth changes everything. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, we're talking about reclaiming the lost art of connection. And my guests today are Christy Neal and Kevin Burke, and they have a ministry called Choose Different Media. And I've enjoyed talking with you both so much about the fine art of listening and how we can reclaim that in our lives. And so we're talking about maybe one practical idea is just put the cell phone away during meals or dinner out. What yes. are some other things, Christy, that you think might work for people? One of the things that we actually learned from our counselor because we were having some listening growing edges <laughs> in our marriage. I never heard that. <laughs> he checked out during that session. But she was talking about how important it is for him to like paraphrase and mm -hmm. myself, paraphrase each other. And she said to say, what I'm hearing you say mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and then paraphrase it and then validate it. I validate your feelings around that. Mm -hmm. And then she told us, this is how we can, was it improve, restore? She had a word for resolution. Mm -hmm. This is how we can bring 
resolution to it. And then she made an acronym with it. That has helped us so much mm -hmm. because for me, as a woman, I just want to be heard. Sure. And then Kevin, as a man, wants to fix it because yeah. that's how he shows love. He mm -hmm. wants yeah. to fix the fix problem. Mm -hmm. And he's an entrepreneur, so that's what he does. Yeah. He fixes problems. And I'm just wanting him to hear me and sometimes just give me a hug. Like right. just walk toward me and give me a hug. Mm -hmm. Tell me it's going to be okay. So as I mentioned, I'm not afraid to ask exactly what I need. Um, and I heard a long time ago from a woman that said, sometimes I just need to, to hear from my husband that I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she discovered that if she bounced up to him and said, tell me I'm beautiful. <laughs> and he would say it, you're so beautiful. But she goes, it felt the same. It fulfilled my need mm -hmm. and it counted. Absolutely. And so I do that all the time to Kevin. She does a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm like, tell me I'm pretty. Or, or I'll make a joke. Wasn't that funny? You know, like I'll, and so I just encourage women mm -hmm. to, you know, men can't read our minds. No. no. It would be no. wonderful if people could read our minds. It yeah. could be scary though, too, sometimes. It could be scary, especially with Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think that was so powerful. Yes, it is. Just simply asking. Mm -hmm. And I know he thinks I'm pretty. He wouldn't have married me if he didn't. Right. And it's so he doesn't mind telling me I'm pretty. Right. And it just, it fulfills the need. Right. And it makes both people in the relationship partners. Yes. Right? Because this idea that my husband can read my mind, and especially we put that Christian label, well, he's supposed to be the leader. He should know what I need. I've learned that is absolutely not true. I need to say, Joseph, this is what I need from you. I need a hug right now. I'm going to tell you something and I don't want you to fix it. And then he'll be like, okay, I just need you to listen and I just, I just need to vent. And then I get what I want. So if, it's so much better if I just ask because this poor man can't figure it out, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I change right. every day anyway. So I just need to tell That's him, right? right? Yeah. And so That's if I right. tell him, then I give him a chance to be my husband and my hero, mm -hmm. right? If I ask him for what he needs in the same with me, you know, mm -hmm. well, Monica, I just need you to listen. I just want to vent. Mm -hmm. You know, Monica, I'm never going to do this, but I just am so mad right now. Yes. And that needs to be okay. And I think those are things sometimes in relationships and in reclaiming the lost art of connection that we've missed because we're so in a hurry. Like Kevin, yes. you've mentioned all the distractions in your head. And mm -hmm. I understand like I'm always thinking. Yeah, always. ADHD, I don't know what it is, but it's mm -hmm. always, my mind's always moving. Yeah. But going back to where you're talking about being heard. Yes. <clears throat> when you talk to Joseph, that's his name? My husband, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's very good, too, that he can feel safe. Yes. Or you can feel safe in asking for things. Like mm -hmm. when Chrissy were to ask me, do I look beautiful? I'm just like, ah, yes. She doesn't feel safe coming to me. Not at all. And so mm -hmm. it works both ways. Because yes, I think it does. we just went through this the other day where I needed something or I wanted something. And I was real hesitant of saying anything because yes. I didn't want to feel needy or I don't, I guess I don't like asking for things. Yes. And um, we had a little bit, uh, some communication going on mm -hmm. during the, <laughs> the discussion. And uh, when it was all over the next day, I actually wanted something or needed her to do something for me. Mm -hmm. And I asked. Mm -hmm. And she, I felt sa I feel safe yes. now doing it because yes. now I, she, I feel heard. Yes. Like you said earlier, you, to feel heard. Right. That's the key is to feel heard when mm -hmm. you, you can talk, but as long as the person you're speaking with yes. actually means, yes, I hear you and I validate it. Right. I would feel safer. That person could feel safe mm -hmm. to communicate that in the future. If you don't have the safe, the security, we'll it's a it. breakdown altogether. You can listen yeah. all day long, but if you don't have the security to That's actually right. feel heard, mm -hmm it's not gonna work. Yeah. yeah, and I have to say, early on in our marriage, Kevin was really good about calling me out. Mm. And I think men sometimes can be really passive in communication. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciated yeah. that he was like, okay, you keep wanting me to communicate with you, but then when I do, you get defensive or you get angry at me mm -hmm. and I don't feel safe communicating right. with you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. and this is our second marriage, both of us, and it started, me reflecting, I didn't create that safe environment of communication uh, in my first marriage, and I didn't want to repeat that again. Right. right. And so I would say for the woman begging for communication, a good question is, are you creating yes. a safe environment for your husband to share? Right. 
Um, and so I've had to work on that. But I love that he called, not in a mean way, mm -hmm. in a very loving way. Right. Yeah, that's me. You know, he called me out on it, and I appreciated that. You know, we both had to work on that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think probably everybody does. You know, and mm -hmm. you mentioned that you're both in your second marriage and that you've had counseling, and I'm glad you've said that. I, I've only been married the one time almost 39 years now, but we've had to do counseling. And there's no shame in that. Absolutely. Because not. here's the thing as we talk about reclaiming the lost art of connection, mm -hmm. most of us, when we get married, don't really know how to communicate. I didn't know, Christy, how to create a safe environment for my husband to talk and for me to listen. Mm -hmm. If he said something, like Kevin, that scared me, like, I'm just so mad. Uh -huh. I wanted to tone that down, like, don't be that way, uh -huh. you know? D be angry and, and don't sin, and, and that's true, but like I didn't give him space to just be heard. Yeah. And I really learned the hard way that what I did was I built a lot of walls between us, mm -hmm. and I had these huge expectations that because he was a Christian man, he would know everything that I needed, and he would know all the things to do. And my interpretation, because he didn't, was, well, you must just not really love me. Yes, yeah. And there wasn't much connection. like. Not, not much listening, mm -hmm. lots of talking, sometimes yelling, but nothing that was good. We, we had to go to counseling and we had to work hard. And so mm -hmm. like for people watching, these things don't, they don't always come naturally. And if it hasn't been modeled for us, we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so right. I'm right. glad you mentioned the counseling because it's been absolutely. helpful, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. In fact, we yes. both agreed, but well, we had done our individual mm -hmm. work in counseling before we got married, both of us felt strongly we didn't want to bring the same things into our second yeah. marriage that we clearly had brought into our first sure. that added to the demise of those relationships. Yeah. So I think, you know, relationship hopping, you're still the same person. Exactly. So, and for us, every time we go, we try to go quarterly. And it's yeah. not like you go next to... week, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> but for us, I will share that since we go quarterly a lot of times, because sometimes when we argue, we don't mm -hmm. resolve things very mm -hmm. well, we can table it and say, you know what? We're gonna table this until we go see Rainey as our counselor. And, and we are so good about literally being able to set that aside until we can go talk about that in front of her. Mm -hmm. And I would say, especially to the men that sometimes feel like this is a weakness, there is such validation in it, that counseling room mm -hmm. for you. It exactly. Is. It and is. Kevin has ha had many like, thank you, Rainey, because mm -hmm. he will be He's trying like, to tell me something or communicate something and I can't hear it, but I can hear it from her mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. And, you know, I know that men need a lot of physical love. Well, I will share this. If you go to counseling with your wife, you will get more love and affection because Absolutely. she will be feeling more uh, loved emotionally. You know, we're emotional beings. We are, for sure. Right? And I always say, we didn't choose to be this way. <laughs> God created us this way. We're complicated. We don't like it either. Mm -hmm. But it just helps mm -hmm. yeah. so much. Yeah. And, and a lot of times we will actually have our issues resolved. We'll table it. That cools everything off. So, yes. okay, we're going to wait. Right. And it's just like, it's like a relief. It's like a yes, burden taking off your back. It's like, okay, I don't yes. have to solve this now. We don't fix it now. Yes. We'll fix it later. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then the next day, we just kind of start touching on things and we resolved it. But by the time we meet the counselor, I guess, mm -hmm. I, I guess it cools you off. Absolutely. It gives you that grace period of like, okay, let me think about this. Yes. And you're not saying, just give me, give me some time alone. Mm -hmm. It's not that. It's like, we're going to fix this but it's going to be when we meet with somebody else, right. an unbiased opinion That's or right. a therapist that right. we've worked with for years that knows us both. And, yeah. you know, and, I'll and most of the time I find out I'm right and she is wrong. <laughs> 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 but I will share that it has helped us so much with yeah. parenting our children because mm -hmm. blending four kids. Absolutely. And they were a lot of them teenagers when we got married. It was tricky, but we would bring those connection issues and communication issues to yeah. our counselor and say, help us, you know, with the age appropriate conversations, mm -hmm. with language to use. Mm -hmm. It helps so much in you being able to connect as a parent mm -hmm. to your child. Yes. And, and I think it's just it's such wisdom 
right? And maturity to say, let's table this for now. We'll come mm -hmm. back to it. And to also say, you know, that we'll go to counseling, right? And that we'll learn, that we'll get the skills we need because none of us come into marriage or into relationships knowing at all. We need people to help us navigate. And I look at Christian counseling as like, if you buy a house, do you not do maintenance on it? Do you not That's mow right. the lawn and clean out the gutters and vacuum the carpet? Well, why would we think as people, you know, I love that you do it yes. quarterly. Then that yes. way you don't just go because you're having a train wreck. Yeah. It's just something that you do every quarter so that you can connect. Yes. Um, so, oh goodness, we are out of time, but I want to thank you oh, so much for coming yes. today. It's been it's so good so to have fun. you. It's been fun. And talk about the lost art of connection. <laughs> yes, <it's been> <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Stay tuned. Monica will be right back. Don't give in. God's word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. If you want to grow your faith and understand God's word more fully, then monicaschmelter.com might be just the place for you. You'll find all of Monica's teachings on demand, complete with online extras. Get started today, because truth changes everything. Today on Bridges, we've talked about reclaiming the lost art of connection. And connection is something that we all want. It's just not necessarily so easy to get there, but it does start with listening and listening carefully. As we talked about today, getting all of the distractions out of our hearts, out of our head, out of our mind and listening carefully to what a person is saying. And maybe that connection that you want so much with your husband, with your wife, with your family could start with just a simple practical step of cell phones get put away during dinner time. There couldn't possibly be anything that important that would override or overrule the need for you to connect with your children, with your family. That connection is so important. When you look at God and how he created everything, the first thing, he created families, Adam and Eve and their children. Family, connection, relationships are so important. So you might try it. Just put away the cell phone at dinner time or when you're out to dinner for 30 days. It might be really hard at first. You might be worrying about your phone. I know I, I do that and I have to remind myself that connecting with my husband, connecting with my son is far more important than what's going on in that cell phone. I can always get back to that after mealtime. So I encourage you, if you've been longing for the connection with your family, with your husband, start beginning by listening to what people are really saying. Be willing to put that cell phone away and just make some changes and see what God won't do. I'm out of time, I've gotta go, but I say goodbye and God bless you.